Hello everyone and welcome back to Whiskey Wednesday. Um, Whiskey of the Year video done. We are now in 2023. Yeah. Welcome to 2023. I hope your first whiskey was a wonderful one. I did a little poll on Twitter the other day asking people about, with price increases, which I know is repetitive now, but it's true. With price increases happening, are we looking at old school classic peated whiskey as our go-to for this very cold, drab winter? Or are we looking at some of the newer ones? And I don't actually know if the poll's over yet, but at the time it was about 52% were looking at new, 48% still looking at old, so it is quite close. But on the subject of that slightly winning percentage, I bring to you Torre Vague. The first brand new distillery on the Isle of Skye since 1832, I think is when Talisker was set up. I, guess. I don't have a bottle of Talisker near me, but I think it's 1832. This is actually nearly six years old as a distillery. I think it's something like the 10th of January 2017 is when they first fully started becoming a production facility. And loads of us, literally loads of us, both reviewers, YouTubers, customers, consumers, everybody, we're all talking about transparent whiskey. I present to you right now that outside of Compass Box, there is nothing, and I even include Brookladdy in that, and I actually maybe put these ahead of Compass Box. There is nothing at the minute that is more transparent as a bottle of whiskey than this. Certainly not a standard bottle of whiskey anyway. This is the Torre Vague Alt Glen. I hope I'm uh, pronouncing that correctly. 46% natural colour, non-chill filtered. This batch of whiskey is from no more than 30 barrels. It is casks from 2017 and 2018. Some of their, probably some of their earliest stock. Um... And something very interesting on the back. Now, if some of you don't follow the, the channel on Instagram, all the links and stuff are below, but I will try and get a close-up of this back label because it is incredibly interesting in terms of the information they've put on it. I'll try and freeze it here so you can see, but I'll also give you a bit of info. Now, they call this a heavily peated whiskey, which is a mix, and it's a mix of Concerto and Laureate malted barley with an ingrained phenol content of 77 ppm. That is before distillation. Post distillation, we are dealing with phenol levels. And this is something I think literally every bottle of whiskey should put on the front of it, because it would mean so much more than a ppm count to pre-distill it. The residual ppm of this whiskey is 17. So it goes in at 77. And I used to say to people, pretty much half it, post-distillation, it might be about half. Obviously, I'm not a scientist. There is no exact rule for this. But they give us a residual PPM of 1.7, 17 phenol parts per million. There's also some very interesting info about the yeast strains they use. It's first fill bourbon and refill whiskey barrels at 46%, free of filtration or chill filtration, and any additional colorant. A beautiful light color. Comes in around sort of... I think it's I paid 52 for that. And there it is in the glass. Now, Talisker, a distillery that I do love in many different ways, for years was the epitome of Sky Style, the Isle of Sky. A very a pita type of whiskey, but indeed very unique within itself. <coughs> Talisker in bullet points is smoky, spicy, and salty. It's the three S's. You can put them in any order you want really. It does have some sweetness to it as well. But this thing is incredibly different. Straight away on the nose, we've got the smoke. And it's a smoke that reminds me very much of things like Kalila and a little bit of Talisca. There is this beautiful combination of salt and lime juice. Kind of getting part ways between margaritas and daiquiris with this thing. And then hidden underneath that is more grapefruit, lemon, orange. So much big, bright, I was going to say bouncy, it's not really the word to describe citrus, but big and bright citrus notes. Even more kind of, not citrus, but moving into orchid fruit of like, mainly apple, it's like sweet, crunchy green apple. All of this is happening while this beautiful smokiness is kind of kicking around the top of it. And a fair bit of salinity. Like as soon as I get the lime note, 
the salt comes in at the same time. Those are two of my favorite flavors in drinks in general, which is why two of my favorite cocktails are daiquiris and margaritas. But it is just in bucket loads in this. And then even with that, we've got these refill casks. You know, so the old, I mean, we've just got into 2023. This distillery is about to turn six years old. So I'm not sure when this was bottled as the one thing it doesn't really have is like a bottling code that I can see on it anywhere. Small point, that's not particularly important. But those refill bourbon casks and those refill whiskey casks, they're giving you this tiny bit of caramel, this little bit of like Chantilly cream, vanilla, all that good stuff. But yeah, this is a bomb of just smoke, salt, and loads and loads of citrus juices. Wonderful thing to smell. Mm. And we taste it. All the citrus goes away. No citrus, nothing bright or bouncy about this. It arrives like an Ardbeg. It is oily, it is bold, it is smoky. You can feel it in every like nip and tuck in your mouth. It is everywhere. It has covered my entire palate with the texture of olive oil and cigar smoke and ashtrays and chewy kind of pithy orange rind, like bitter, sharp. Actually, I take the sharp bit back. Bitter, herbal, earthiness. There's like a bit of ginger. There's a little bit of kind of soft black licorice tone to it. But there's also a kind of lemon oil. It reminds me like of if you took a Sazerac cocktail and smoked it. We're getting into some interesting territory with this thing. It is robust. It cuts through. It is honestly so good. And as you can see, like it's yeah, it's pretty pretty good whiskey. Um, I love this thing. And if any of you have ever seen the Mossburn single casks, or I think they do some blended malts too, it's the same company. Mossburn owns Torre Vague. I think it's the Mossburn family that own, own and operate Torre Vague. Sublime whiskey, especially for the money. Very, 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 very good. Significantly more interesting than a lot of the regular peated whiskey that I've tried this year. Like the new Kalila 12 or the newer batches, not a fan. Um, retried Lagavulin 16 the other day for the first time in a long time. And it was not, it wasn't not as good as it used to be. It was just a bit flat. And then tried this and it was just... Excellent. Very, very, very excellent whiskey. That gets a solid nine from me. This is one of the most interesting, affordable, robustly flavored whiskies I've come across in quite a long time. And they're brand new, and everyone in whiskey tube world that I'm aware of doesn't seem to be talking about it. Uh, that will honestly give Ardbeg 10 a run for its money. Ardbeg 10, most people kind of, you know, Praise at the altar of Ardbeg 10. Not until you try this. Anyway, that's Torre Vague Alt Glen. I'm Phil. Welcome into 2023. Uh, that's a whiskey I particularly enjoy quite a bit, and I will see you all next week. Cheers.